cow and click on my record button. I actually keep this on my keyboard. So I remember to click and start recording. And what will happen is after the session here today, I will pull the recording link down and I will put this up on YouTube and then I'll share the link for you for, with you guys so you can watch the playback if you'd like to watch it again. All right, and I like to do that reminder just so you are aware it is being recorded and it could be, um, it will be posted on YouTube so others may see your messages and, and your questions as well. So let's get started. These are gonna be tips to make a great impression in virtual meetings. And I would love it if you guys could message and chat. Um, tell me a little bit about how you're using Zoom. Are you using it as a job seeker? Are you currently in career transition? Are you using it for business development? Are you using it to grow your business and just do, um, you know, kind of get the word out there and maybe doing prospecting meetings and whatnot? Are you using Zoom for networking, whether it's attending a chamber event or in forum or Together Digital or whatever organization you belong to in your industry? Are you using a lot of Zooms for networking? Um, there may be other reasons, but drop that into chat now. I'd love to hear a little bit about how you are using Zoom. And if you're um, able to do so, I'd love it if you could drop your LinkedIn URL into the comments as well. I'm a big believer that these sessions, every Zoom session you go into is an opportunity for networking. So let's connect with each other. And if you want, feel free to visit my LinkedIn profile. I'm actually gonna drop my LinkedIn URL. What, I, what I'm gonna do here, so I think I'm doing a full screen in PowerPoint. And this is a little trick I've learned. You have to kind of hit escape a few times to get out of PowerPoint. And then I'm going to go into my LinkedIn account. I'm actually just going to pull up LinkedIn in a separate page here. And when I pull up my LinkedIn account, um, rather than type my whole URL in because I might miss key something, I just go to my LinkedIn page and then I grab it and I just kind of double click it to highlight it. I do control C for copy. And then I'm going to go back into chat and just hit control V for paste. And that way it's a clickable link. And one of the secrets of putting something into chat to making it clickable is it has to have, I believe that HTTP or HTTPS with the slashes at the beginning. And that makes it clickable. clickable. If I just put www.linkedin.com in Brenda Mello, it may not be clickable. So that's one of my little, um, little hacks and techniques. So um, as we get this discussion started here today, again, just encourage you guys to introduce yourselves in chat, to drop your URL, and I would encourage you to connect with one another. If you'd like to connect with me on LinkedIn, when you go to my profile, the default button is actually set as um, follow. If you want to connect with me, you'll have to click the more button, and then you'll see an option that will say either personalize, invite, or connect. It'll be an option. All right. Apple juice. I switched off of the coffee I wanted to juice for the afternoon here. All right, let's see what we have in terms of questions and comments here so far. Um, let's see here. Uh, none of the above. Work mostly connecting with family and friends. Uh, job seeker use of, of LinkedIn. Networking and educational webinars. Business and networking. Uh, stay connected with coaches and coworkers. So I'm going to say networking there. Work social networking. Um, using Zoom for church, networking, job seeking, and learning. Awesome. So thank you guys for sharing that. Um, kind of curious how you're using it. And um, I love this, this meme. I'm going to see if I can pull it a little bit larger so you can see it up on your on screen here. I found this on um, Instagram. And I don't know if you guys remember the Muppet Show from, when was it? Was it like in the 70s, 80s? I would watch it as a kid. And I remember the Muppet Show coming on. It was like a big deal. And I remember they had this, this thing in the background with all the different puppet characters and I was like, wow, it's like a stadium and all the puppets are there. And now it's like, that's kind of what Zoom meetings are. You see people, right? You're seeing them in the stadium. And I thought it was a really um, appropriate meme picture to show you guys as we're having this conversation about Zoom. So today, what I want to show you is um, I'll be focusing on a few items. Number one, the importance of your background. And I'm going to give you some tips for real backgrounds. I've got a real background behind me right now. Um, I'm going to also talk to you about how to create and use some of the virtual backgrounds in Zoom. If you haven't used those yet, we're actually going to practice that today. We're going to talk about camera and lighting tips. I'll give you some pointers there. We'll talk about sound and audio tips. Um, and then in the session tips, you know, what can you do as you're in a Zoom session? And then the bonus is how to make yourself a little bit more memorable after a Zoom networking session. 
So um, why? Why do I have this webinar? Why am I offering this to you? Well, I'm a marketer. Uh, I've been doing a lot of presentations over the years and I'm getting a lot of experience now doing Zoom sessions like today. Um, I'm also doing live interviews where I've got kind of a split scene camera, as you see with Carrie and, and with Nikki there. And, and I don't always nail it 100%. You can see the lighting difference between my interview with Carrie and my interview with Nikki. I do not make mistakes. I have learning experiences and I want to share those with you. Why is it important to win at Zoom? Because this is what we have right now in terms of networking. This is where we are making a first impression with some people, and this is where we are creating lasting impressions with people as well. Um, do I win at Zoom? Most of the time, but not all the time. And I'll share with you the techniques and, and some things I've, I've learned that don't work well as well. Will I call up everything? No, I don't work for Zoom. My background is marketing and I help people with LinkedIn. But as a, an experienced presenter, I will share with you what I know, and I will be the first to admit, if you ask me a question I don't know the answer to, I will tell you that as well. So that is my promise to you. All right, so let's start with talking about your background. And um, you, you know, we've got you and your, your video camera, and, and these are kind of things that are framing up what is behind you. So when you're going into a Zoom session, I always like to make sure that there is an intentional background behind you. So I want you guys to kind of look behind you right now. And, and what I like to do is you can even create a Zoom and just open up Zoom and, and test this out yourself before going into a live session. But you want to think about what is behind you. If you're using like the IRL in real life, what is behind you in the scene? I mean, you want to be intentional about what is behind you. And you can see here over my shoulder, I've got my diploma. So I think that helps to kind of set me as an academic type of person. Um, over my right shoulder, you see I've got this, this lighting kit. And I'm, I put that in here intentionally because sometimes you may have things in the background that are distracting. So, distracting. so I just wanna show you the difference here. If I turn that off, then I don't have that distracting white in the background, okay? And you also might go, you might be looking at going, what is that thing? So having something that doesn't make sense in the background can be distracting. So let's say I move it out of frame, right? And now I've just got a blank wall that's kind of behind me and I've got a, a plant over in the corner. I intentionally have that there because I have some cords behind me in the wall. So the plant is actually camouflaged, okay? Another thing is um, if I move my camera and I've got it on a, a tripod easel, I'm in a, a um, basement home office, we're in like a quad level and the power outlet, you see this right here? It's right behind me on the wall. So I have to be very intentional about where my camera is framing things as, as I'm kind of sitting in the meeting and as I'm getting started. And I've debated, I've got a whiteboard behind me. Do I move that? Do I write things on it? But I, I'm, right now I'm being intentional. I wanna keep things clean so that the focus is on me. Or if I have things in the background, like my diploma, which is on the side, like my diplomas, like the plant, it's creating something that's visually interesting but not distracting, okay? So I want you to think about those things as you're kind of framing yourself up in the background and and we're going to talk a little bit about um, camera angle here in a second, but I just want you to think about, you know, and newscasters do this as they are doing live interviews on the street. They're always being very intentional about what is appearing behind me. So you can think about putting framed inspirational pictures behind you. You can put artwork behind you. Um, I love Cynthia's got an example of a bookshelf behind her where there's interesting items that are behind, but just make sure that um, it's, it's kind of, it looks right on camera. You have to be intentional. It shouldn't, shouldn't just be showing us your bedroom or you know, a, a messy living room or things like that. You wanna be intentional. And when we think about choosing a location at home, um, I want you to think about you know, trying your setups in different rooms because you might find that facing a blank wall is actually a lot better than um, the direction of your desk which faces a closet or something that's too cluttered looking behind you, okay? So you may have to move where you normally do your phone calls into a different location when you're doing a Zoom call if you're using that in real life background. Um, so that kind of starts us off into the conversation, which makes us, uh, moves us into the segue of what if you use a virtual background instead? Time check real quick here. Charlotte, what time is it right now? One sixteen. One sixteen. Perfect. So, in terms of virtual backgrounds, if you have not already used this feature, and I'm actually going to escape out of here so I can um, go back into my Zoom here, 
if you have not already used this feature, this is only something you can see in the desktop view. In the menu bar at the bottom, you should see a little video camera in there, guys. And in that little video camera icon, there's an arrow next to it. When you click on the arrow, there's an option to choose a virtual background. When you do that, you can go into a menu and you'll see a, a, a menu of backgrounds there. And, and it says choose virtual background. So in my Zoom, I have, um, I think, four different images I could choose from. None, which is the black background and it shows in real life behind me. I could choose um, this, I don't know, this is San Francisco Bridge, Golden Gate, I think, behind me. So I can choose that. And feel free, guys, if you want to test this as we are going, go ahead and incorporate and test these virtual backgrounds behind you right now. This is the time and the place to do it. Test this now, not when you're in a live session when people are paying attention to you. There's also this grass background, and this gets a little, like, it's almost like pixely around my, my face at times in here, so I have to be careful about that one. There's this space background. It looks like it's like the, the earth and the sun is rising over it. And they have a couple of video backgrounds as well. This one's the, the northern lights, and it's kind of like a little bit of a, a moving visual effect. I like the beach one, too, um, because I, um, especially on rainy, crummy days, <laughs> putting a beach background, it's kind of a fun thing to have in the background. And then the other thing you could do is you can actually upload your own photos into here. There's a little plus sign icon, and then you can click to upload an image or upload a video. Um, if you have a certain image you'd like to use, you can certainly upload that in the background, or you could Google uh, virtual backgrounds for Zoom, and there's templates that you can download from TV shows and you know virtual cafes and office settings and things like that. Um, I found one that is Pi. Uh, if you know me, if you follow me online, I see Karen smiling right now. I love pie. I love coffee, chocolate, and pie. And pie has become a little bit of my personal brand. So this is a background I frequently use when I'm in meetings. And it helps to create a little bit of um, continuity of my brand story. I've also used one with my logo. And look what I've done here. So if I back up a little bit, isn't that kind of fun? I have to center myself a little bit underneath that, but isn't that fun? So you can think about incorporating virtual backgrounds um, that help to promote your brand as I'm doing here. It can be items that are promoting your personal brand, like my pie icon in here, or just something that's a little bit nondescript, um, you know, just this pink dots and things like that. So those are just a couple of examples of virtual backgrounds that you could use on your Zoom. Check out stock photo sites like Pexels and Unsplash for free commercially licensed used photos, backgrounds. That's where I got my pie and, and a couple of the other ones. And do keep in mind that you're going to be in the middle of the frame. So make sure there's nothing in the middle that's going to be hidden. I don't want to have the pie behind me. I want to have the pie on either side of me. So do keep that in mind. All right, moving on, let's talk about camera and lighting next. And I've got some tips I've learned from different people in my network over the years. One is the camera should be at eye level. So right now, I want you to think about if my finger had like a level on it and I need to keep it straight, pointing straight across that should be my camera and I'm pointing right at it right now. Many of you I can tell are watching this replay on a, on a laptop and your, your finger is pointing down. So now the camera is angling up and it's, it's a slightly different um, iteration. It's actually better to have the camera at eye level. So if you are watching your zooms on a laptop, here's what I would do. Put something underneath your laptop to raise it up. You might have a shoebox or um, maybe a couple game boards or something like that, something that's going to be stable and level. My daughter, when I first started doing these Zoom webinars, she had a Barbie case and it was like maybe about six to eight inches. I put that underneath my laptop. I used what I had. I did not have an external webcam at the time. So think about raising your laptop so that your camera is eye level, kind of going straight across. Make sure you're making eye contact with the camera as well. That's a really great way to continue with audience engagement and to build engagement. When I look at you guys, I'm looking down over here. I'm not creating engagement. When I'm looking at the camera and little techniques, like sometimes I lean in, that's gonna create greater engagement, okay? Um, another tip for you guys. This is from my friend, Matt Dibble, who does video production. He says it should be in this order, lighting source, camera, you. So I want you to think about this. Lighting source is behind the camera, facing towards you. The camera is in the middle and then you. So if you're facing a window, you've got the lighting source in the background, then the camera, and then you. Now I've actually got lighting kits. I wanna show you guys this. So I've got a box light on, on one side of me over here, and I've got another box light on the other side over here. 
I purchased these off of Amazon and I think it was like 60 bucks or something. It wasn't too expensive. Let me show you the difference here. If I turn the light off on this one and I turn the light off on this one, does that look okay? <laughs> and how many times have you been on a Zoom webinar where it's been like that? And let me just angle this one box lighting kit away from the window. Here's what it looks like with natural lighting. If you have the opportunity to be in front of a window with natural lighting, that is best. I'm not crazy about the shadows that are being created around me in my home office. So I have chosen to keep on my box lighting, okay? If you don't have a box light, use natural light, but make sure light source camera you. I also have purchased one of these ring lights that I will sometimes you use, and it has like a amber hue and a white hue to it as well. Um, I think that was like 20 bucks or something on Amazon. So consider lighting kits if you have the budget to do so. It's definitely worth that investment, okay? Move around the house. Here's another technique. If, um, if you're not crazy about you know, the camera angle, the lighting isn't good in the room, move. Um, if you're facing away from a window, if you've got a window behind you, let me just see if anyone on the call is set up this way right now. So it looks like Lorraine Norwich. Lorraine, if you were to face towards the window, we could see your face. Right now, I can't see your face at all. It's very, very dark in there in terms of the lighting. So moving and pointing your, your laptop towards the window. There we go. It looks like she just turned a lamp on. Now we can see your face. And this is a really great way of making engagement with people, okay? So lighting source, camera you is kind of that, that flow. And I've I put Carrie and Nat's LinkedIn URLs. Feel free to connect with them and, and tell them I was talking about them on the webinar if you see them. Um, I use an external webcam. I personally find it, it's better than a laptop webcam. Why? The laptop webcams don't have great quality. If I were to switch mine off, let me see if I can do this right now. can't hear you. All right, again, can you hear me now? So another limitation when you are using external webcams and you unplug them and you're using audio, the sound goes out at the same time. So let me plug back in both items. Wave if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Wave if you can hear me. Awesome. So what I'm just doing right now too, this is really important as you're delivering sessions, making sure your audience can hear you, especially when everybody is muted during the session. But now I'm just pointing to the camera. This is a technique I use to try to figure out which camera is capturing me, that camera is capturing me. So think about if you have the money, it's worth investing in an external webcam. I have my mounted on a tripod and that allows me to get it to eye level and I can keep my screen for viewing participants. Okay, couple final things and then we'll wrap here. Some sound and audio tips. I am using a headset and I've actually got I don't know if you guys can see these are kind of tiny. I'm going to take one of them off here. I've got these little looped over headset um, that I use. I prefer these over, I've got my iPhones um, as well. I use these sometimes, but the limitation I have, I don't know about you guys, but we've got like these, the little plug things, and I don't have the dongle that it plugs into the plug in my computer. I think we've got one or two of them in the house. There's four of us. We're always fighting over where's the dongle. It's worth it for me. I think I paid 14 bucks for these on Amazon. And then I purchased lapel microphone. This was a little bit more expensive, but I do a lot of online speaking. And I wanna show you the audio and quality difference here. So it's, it's slight, but let's see if you can notice the difference. Right now I'm plugged in using the external headset and the lapel microphone. I'm unplugging now. Can you tell the audio difference? It's very slight in terms of the audio quality difference. Can you tell it a little bit of a difference? And then the other thing, Charlotte, I'm gonna have you say hi, mommy, real quick. Hi, mommy. Can you hear my background daughter talking right now when, when I'm unplugged? Now let's plug that in again. And then Charlotte, can you say hi, mommy, again? Hi, mommy. Could you guys hear her the second time? Couldn't really hear it. So it's, it's, it's slight, right? It's in the room, but it's starting to block out a little bit of that background noise. It's keeping the noise um, more focused on the microphone. Do be careful of background noises. If noises happen, Mute yourself, excuse yourself if needed, take care of whatever needs to be taken care of, the dog barking, the child screaming, things like that. Um, if you're on a panel, highly, highly encourage you, please use an external mic. 
lapel mic or other and earphones, you can tell the audio difference. It sounds like you're in a tunnel and it will increase the perception of quality of who you are as a speaker and as a subject matter expert if you're using an external mic and some headphones, okay? It is slight, but it is perceptible to people who are watching the session, okay? So those are some sound and audio tips, and I'll give you two final comments here. Um, we'll talk about in the session and then a couple things for afterwards. Mute yourself when entering and not talking, and I always put people on mute all as they're coming into the session. That way, if there's background noises, if I need to cough, if I shuffle papers, you're not hearing that. So just as a courtesy, mute yourself. Change your name, maybe. Right now, if you guys haven't tried this before, cover over your name in the little video icon field and you can click on rename. Sometimes I've seen people put in things like Brenda LinkedIn Coach, for example, and that way it's showing what my job title is and my category and it's differentiating me from other people who are on the call. So consider that if you're trying to position yourself and make yourself a little bit more memorable, it's a great way of creating a little bit of that naming um, convention. So again, if you go into the video panel, there's three dots on there, click on the three dots, and then you can rename yourself and, um, you know, put something a little bit different. I like to put first name and then maybe a job title or an industry category. Show your video. Um, everybody, I think on the session here today, there's a couple people that out. So Cassandra, Kathy, Anna, um, those three are not showing themselves on video. Show yourself on video every time you can. Um, I think it creates greater audience engagement. Look at the camera while talking. Here's me not looking at the camera. Here's me looking at you guys, right? Here's me looking at the camera, which is best, right? Audience engagement, right? So when you're talking, look at the camera. If you're listening to other people talk, it's okay to look down, right? But when you are talking, look at the camera. Yes, it feels awkward, but it looks so much better on video and it looks like you're looking at the other attendees, okay? There's long boring invitations. What I do guys is I, um, or rather introductions, if a lot of people are talking, I go out to LinkedIn and I'll send out invitations because if it's a 40 minute networking, I'm gonna use that time to do some online networking, but don't tell anybody I told you I do that, <laughs> right? Cause you know what I'm talking about? Sometimes those introductions are going super, super long and you're like, okay. I go onto LinkedIn and I will invite people in the session to connect with me. Another session tip is to save a chat transcript if possible. Now, if you go into chat right now, guys, and at the bottom where it says everyone, there's three dots off to the right-hand side. If you click on the three dots, you can save the chat down. If people have included their LinkedIn URLs or introductions or things like that in the chat, then you have a local copy of it that's been saved on your computer. So definitely consider saving the chat transcript if you can. And grab a screen capture. Um, this is what I do. Whenever I'm in an educational webinar, if you've got one of those screen clipping tools, it's easier to do it this way. Use the screen clipping tool and just take a screen capture of something that's up on screen along with the attendees. I will use that later on to post on social media. And I might say, today I attended Cynthia Moni's great educational webinar and I learned X, Y, and Z. And then I'll tag her in the post and she feels good. And I've got something that I'm talking about online that day. If you do not have a um, screen clipping tool, do what I do. We've all got these little devices, right? With phones or with cameras on it. Turn it sideways and then just manually take a picture of your screen. And that is something you can use to post on social media later, okay? So those are some in-session tips. And here's a final couple final tips here on bonus items, how to be memorable. Um, here's what I do. I send LinkedIn invitations to attendees and I mention something from the session. So I might say, um, hey, let me see who else is on the session here today. Whoops, I went back. I was trying to slide down here. So I might say, hi, Rick, thanks for joining the session on LinkedIn, you know, the Zoom webinar on LinkedIn today. I had the pie background. So I might mention something like that in the session. Or if we were chatting about something during the webinar, I might say, just following up, you mentioned you sell office furniture, I need a new chair or something like that. Um, tailor your background to the meeting host. If I'm on a Troy Chamber event, for example, wouldn't it be cool if I came into the session with a Troy Chamber background behind me? So think about that. Tailor your background, your virtual background to the meeting host. Make it about them. That is a memorable tip. You guaranteed, Cynthia, you will get a call out from the Troy Chamber president if you have a Troy Chamber background, right? Have props handy. I've got all kinds of props. I will put things on the sidelines here. I might have my sunglasses. I might join the session wearing my sunglasses to start. If I present in person, you'll know that I often will wear my pink cowboy hat and I might have that in the session. I might even have my feather boa. 
I might have that in the session as well. And I might just come into that session wearing my whole getup. And as I join the session, I might just be kind of smiling, right, and pleasant. And when I come in, they're gonna go, oh my gosh, Brenda's on the session, right? And the party has started, right? And it just creates a lot of memorability. And then I'll take it off. I'm not gonna keep it on necessarily for the whole session. But think about what props could you use that support your personality, that support your business, and consider using those as you join a Zoom session. And it's perfectly okay to, to put them off afterwards. Another tip is to smile. Um, I try to look pleasant on camera when I first join the meeting, when we're saying goodbye, you know, smiling for that as well. If they do a group picture, participate, smile, show your video. Um, that creates great engagement and a nice feeling of warmth for people. And the final tip here, and then we'll, we'll take a couple of questions, is to use chat. So throughout the session, I guarantee if you guys come into a webinar that I am attending, I will always ask a question in there. I will always drop my LinkedIn URL and encourage people to connect with me on LinkedIn. And if I know people in the session, I will go into chat and I'm going to do this right now and I'll find the people that I know and I might say, hi, Kathy. And Kathy's getting a private message from me right now. And then I might go and say hi to Rick. I know Rick as well. So I'm just going to say hi to the people. And it's kind of like if you walk into a networking event, guys, and you see people that you know, you're going to make a point, right, to go over and say, hey, Cynthia, how are you doing? Hi, Regina, nice to see you today. Why wouldn't you do the same thing in a Zoom session, right? Message them and just say hello. It's just it's a simple thing, and, and a lot of people just don't think about it. But message people on, on LinkedIn, rather message people in the session, in the Zoom session that you know and follow up. All right, guys, we're going to go just a few minutes over. This is my first time offering this Zoom webinar, and I'm trying to figure out timing of this. So I might have to pare down the content for the future. But I do want to wrap before we go into Q&A with just a few additional reminders. I'm an independent marketing consultant. I specialize in helping people with LinkedIn. If you're looking for help on using LinkedIn for business development, I've got a series of 90-minute webinars. Right now, they're priced at just $49.99 per session. The prices will be going up in July. So check those out. I'll talk about optimizing your LinkedIn profile, using search invitation and messaging for business development, finding prospects, posting and network engagement, and then building and optimizing your LinkedIn page. So check those out. I'm actually going to grab this URL right now, and I'll drop this in the chat. If you're interested in learning more about those sessions, I'll give you a quick link that you can pop on over to learn about them. And then also a um, couple other things. I'm doing a whole series of these Power 30 webinars, and I'm actually loving these right now. They're fun, quick hit topics. This is the first time doing this session, so I might squeeze the content down a little bit for future sessions, but I'm doing a LinkedIn 101 for beginners coming up. It's free. Um, if you're not on LinkedIn yet, you're curious, what is LinkedIn? Why do I need to be on there? And how do I grow a, pro grow a profile? I'll give you some beginner tips there. I'll be repeating the winning at Zoom session in the future. I have another one, which is six tips for using LinkedIn for business development. And then I have one called setting your prices as an independent consultant with some strategy tips for you guys to consider there. It's the same page there as the previous and those are free. I also do offer individual LinkedIn coaching. I help people with profile creation and profile rewrites. And I can also help you with your company page strategy or with advertising if you're looking for any additional help on LinkedIn. So I'm going to now open it up to Q&A. We'll stay online for maybe about another five minutes here, guys. And do send a message in chat to share one thing that you learned here today before you leave the session. I would love to hear your feedback on something that you learned, something that was helpful. So drop that into chat before you leave. And feel free, if you haven't posted on LinkedIn today, post that on LinkedIn. Go on LinkedIn this afternoon and say, hey, I attended this phenomenal LinkedIn uh, rather phenomenal Zoom webinar led by Brenda Meller, tag me in that. And I learned this and share, share with people something that you learned. If you took a picture, feel free to post that, um, share that on, on LinkedIn as well. I would encourage you, anything I'm sharing here today is public information. I'm more than happy to share that out. All right, guys, so let's go into chat and see if you guys have any questions um, that I can help you with. Are the slides via LinkedIn? Um, Anna, they are not. If you would like a copy with the slides, what I'll ask you if you could just email me and then I'll send you a link where you can download them. Um, I'm debating about you know future sessions like these. I'm sharing out the playback link, um, but I, I don't know how much value people are getting in the slides themselves. So if you'd like a copy of the slides, just email me back and I'd be happy to share a link to download a playback of the slides with you. Okay. Kathy says, hey, girlfriend, great point. Love it. Making connections there, right? Really good. Um, 
Karen says she was in a Zoom meeting where the theme was Beatles songs. So she used a background with Beatles wearing bandanas over their faces. Really clever, very appropriate. And I'm sure that that helps you to create a greater connection. Do you need permission to take post pictures of others? What I will say to that question, Regina, is if it's a webinar that is open to the public, um, I normally don't ask permission. I, um, you know, sometimes people, um, if, they, if it's a closed session topic, they um, may not wish to have um, their photo taken. You could certainly ask the group. I kind of say know your audience and you might even want to just message the, um, the group chat and just say everyone, hey, I'm going to take a quick picture to post on social media. Um, I usually don't, Regina. Um, what I would do is if I know the people that are in the, the photo, I'll, I'll tag them on LinkedIn. Very rarely have I had someone say, hey, I don't want to be on camera. I think nowadays people, if they don't want to be on camera, they're hiding themselves on camera. They're not showing themselves because anytime you go online, especially if it's a public event, I think there's the possibility that that could be shared, right? So personally, I don't. Um, if you're using the, the photos for business use and you're selling them for some purpose, then you may need to ask permission and get them to sign off on a release form. But the average session like these, I don't think, um, I don't go through that process of asking permission. Having said that, I am not a lawyer. Talk to your lawyer, ask them that question. <laughs> All right, let's see what else in here. Any other final questions before we wrap up? Susan, thank you so much. She says she's joining um, all the upcoming webinars. I'm really happy to see that. Thank you so much. And I learned about the equipment that makes things easier and more effective. The camera light purchasing ringer box lights, awesome. Glad that helped you out. They're, they're cheap. I was surprised when I went on Amazon for these uh, lighting kits. It was like 60 bucks and these things are ginormous. Um, if you guys didn't see them, I mean, look at this lighting kit. It's like, it's, it's like a camera quality from like Hollywood movies um, setting it up. And, and I learned, you know, every time I purchase something, I learned like next time I would probably get, this is like a white screen. I would probably get an amber screen as well, just to be able to adjust that. Regina says, I have a lapel mic, don't use it. I learned I need to use it. Absolutely, it does capture crisper, higher quality audio. Let your personality shine through. Gosh, am I giving you guys personality today or what, right? I am trying to make this fun because when you're leading a webinar, people want to have fun. They want to be entertained and they want to be engaged, right? So I say definitely get your personality in there. Do that with your introductions too when you're on other webinars. Um, learn the benefit of box lighting and the lighting ring headed to Amazon. Absolutely. They're very cheap. Look at reviews and see what other people say about them. Do you know what the webcam model is that you are using? Yes, Rick. I've actually got a blog that I am starting to put all of my equipment into. If you just send me an email afterwards, Rick, and say, hey, can you give me that link? I will be happy to share that with you. I don't have it in front of me in here. All right, so Cynthia learned the importance of background, what's behind you, lighting, camera position, smiling, right? And have a little fun with props. What kind of mics do you use and do you find good? I asked around um, to find this particular lapel mic. I like it. Um, I, I wanna go with lower price point. I didn't wanna have one of those, you know those big microphones people use when they're doing podcasts? I didn't wanna have one of those in front of me. I wanted something that was a little bit um, more subtle in the background here. Okay, so background you probably mentioned, but lost my connection earlier. So Anna, we will, I did record this whole session. I will share with you guys a link to the playback if you'd like to watch this again. Um, at this point, I'm going to